Good afternoon, church. How is everybody doing today? Having a good day? Um, I'm so happy to see all of your beautiful faces. I'm going to steal Vlad's line. You made the best decision to be here today. Amen. As we redirect our thoughts, as we start thinking about the Lord and going into worship, I want to tell you a dream that I had one time. It was... Honestly, I don't remember at this point the circumstances or anything that was happening. It was such a long time ago. But in my dream, I somehow acquired this massive amount of money. Like some kind of treasure that I found was just like, I'm not even kidding, like heaps and heaps of money. And I, in my dream, I realized that I was dreaming, but somehow in that state of mind, I was not fully understanding, but I'm like, okay, I need to take as much of this with me when I wake up, as much as I can. So I'm like trying to take all this stuff and I wake up and obviously I don't have any heaps of money or treasure with me. And even though this was such a silly thought, but this is how I was thinking in my dream. And this is sometimes how we live our lives where Um, Life is almost like a dream. It's such a short amount of time. And eventually we're going to be in the eternal reality. And yet we try to gain as much from our earthly possessions as possible. Like we're going to be able to take it into heaven with us. And we invest so much time and effort into our careers, our hobbies, um, hanging out with friends sometimes, wealth. And... Frankly, most of the things that we do in this world, we won't be able to take with us into heaven, into eternity. But the worship that we bring to Jesus here, that's what we're going to be able to take into eternity with us. And as we're going to be coming into praise and worship today, I want us to realize and understand that we are actually invited to partake in something that's happening in heaven right now. What we're going to be doing here is happening in heaven right now at this time. And it's so awesome to think about it, that this is not something that we're creating, but this is something that is already happening and we just join in. So that just creates this free atmosphere to not put any pressure on yourself because we're not thinking of something new. We're not imagining something great. We are stepping in into something that already has happened. Somebody already thought of this party and this amazing thing that's happening and we just come and we're gonna do something a little unconventional, but I want every single person here to close your eyes right now. Everybody, worship team, everybody, every single person, close your eyes. And I'm going to read through Revelation chapter four. I don't want anybody to follow along. Don't turn it on the screen or anything, but with every eye closed, I want you to just imagine the picture that I'm going to be reading right now. Imagine the scene that is happening in heaven right now. After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, stood a throne in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments, with golden crowns on their heads. And from the throne came flashes of lightning, and rumblings and pearls of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings and full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was 
and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you our Lord and God to receive the glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created as we rise to our feet right now i just want us to envision this upper room of worship and praise join together with all of heaven and just worship the king of kings like they are worshiping in heaven Jesus we thank you we thank you that you are seated in heaven that you are seated at the right hand of God we want to bring you the praise we want to bring you the glory today Jesus oh we lift our hearts to you Lord Holy Spirit open up our mouths today to praise the king of kings you are deserving Jesus you are worthy Jesus we thank you for all that you do Lord there is nobody like you there is nobody worthy hallelujah Jesus we worship you I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure, I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise when I feel it. I'll praise when I don't. I'll praise because I know. My praise is the weapon, it's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise 
want to surrender our hearts to you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness over us, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. That no matter what, you always show up. No matter what, you're always drawing us near, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We want to pour out our thanksgiving to you. We want to pour out our praise to you, Jesus. Deserving of everything, Lord. But we don't want to hold anything back today. We just want to submit ourselves, Lord, to you. Just posture our hearts towards you, Jesus.
Oh 
You deserve the glory. You are holy, Lord.
Holy is your name. Worthy is your name. Father, there is none like you. Not in the heavens above, on the earth, through the earth below. No one compares to you. And would he stand holy in awe of your presence. We are so thankful for your spirit and your presence in this place. We thank you that you are here ministering to us, sanctifying us, changing us, reforming us, so that we could be more like you. God, that's our heart's desire in this place today. That's our heart's desire in this life is to be more like you, is to look like you, to carry the sweet aroma of your fragrance through this earth, Father God, that righteousness would be known from hill to hill to the corners of this earth, Father God, that your light would shine and drive out the darkest of places, Father God. We pray that your church would be sanctified. Father, we pray that your church would be made holy and would be made righteous, Father, that you would once again lift us up to our rightful place, that we would be an example to this world of your love and your grace and your mercy father God that we would be an example of the price that was paid on Calvary 2,000 years ago that the power of the blood of Jesus is still active and working today father that there is still healing in your name that there is still deliverance in your name that there is still freedom in your name father the words you spoke so many years ago that if they would call upon my name, that if they would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven. You will forgive our sin and you will heal our land. And like never before, we cry out, Father God, for an outpouring of deliverance and revival in this nation, in these towns, in your churches, that we would turn our gaze back to you so that as heaven cries, we could respond. Holy is your name. Worthy is your name. Righteous is your name. Come on, all of that is found in the name of Jesus. Do you know that name? Do you know that name? His name is Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you. I'd invite the ushers to come forward. You know, I always found it peculiar, Apostle Paul having written the majority of the New Testament and so many of his epistles and so many of his letters to the churches, he refers to himself as a servant, as a bond servant, as a slave to Christ. And there's so many things that Apostle Paul was known for and there's so many titles that he had but the most common one he referred to, he said, I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ. And I started to think to myself, man, what is the significance of that title? All of us are seeking for ourselves something highly esteemed. How many of us want to be known as a servant? And I read in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 22. You can read along. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God you have your fruit to holiness and the end which is everlasting life slave was a cruel master a harsh master but when I think about what it means to be a slave to God, I don't think of a cruel and harsh master. I don't think of living a life obligated to Christ. I don't live a life waking up every morning dreading that I'm called a Christian, dreading that I'm called to love, dreading that I'm called to be holy, dreading that I'm called to be righteous, dreading that I'm called to, li to give. But I wake up in the morning with thanksgiving and gratitude that I'm given the privilege to be called a servant of Jesus Christ. See, because when you're a slave to God, you're not a slave of obligation. 
you're a slave to gratitude to his grace. So many of us have a hard time surrendering because we have a hard time understanding what Jesus truly did. He's called us to sacrifice it all. And see, you can't, you can only sacrifice to the degree that you've surrendered. And you can only surrender to the degree you've been set free. When you understand how much you've been set free, surrender and sacrifice becomes a daily, natural outpouring. I don't give because I have to. I don't give because I've been told to. I don't give because I feel condemned when I don't. I give because I've been called to be a partaker of his will. And when I pray that prayer, I pray it with sincerity. Your will be done, your kingdom come. In any way that I might be useful, Lord, use me here on earth. So as I welcome you into the worship of our giving, I encourage you to meditate on this and to open your heart and your mind for Holy Spirit to minister to you the true degree to which you and I have been set free. And when we know surrender and sacrifice becomes something that we get excited about. Our ushers are here. Let's bow our heads and let's give thanks to the Lord. God, we're here not of our own accord. We're not here, Father God, because we've saved ourselves or sanctified ourselves. We're not here because we account our, our works worthy. We're here because of what Jesus did so many years ago. We're here because the blood of Jesus is still active. We're here because the broken body of Jesus Christ still makes us whole today. We are so thankful to you. My God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that our minds would be transformed and our hearts would be renewed today to receive greater knowledge and understanding. Lord, you said my people perish for lack of knowledge. I pray, God, that we would not be that people today, but that we would be renewed in knowledge and wisdom and revelation, Father God, of how much you truly did for us on that cross. And as that fruit begins to grow within us, Lord, I pray that our lifestyle be a lifestyle of surrender and of giving, not just on Sunday afternoons, but throughout the week, day after day, that we would give grace, that we would give mercy, that we would give love. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. As you're taking your seats, just look to the people to your left and right. Welcome them in this house. If there's someone next to you that looks a little unfamiliar, say, hey, we're blessed to have you in this place. You know, I, uh, I truly count my job a great blessing. I think God has shown me great favor with my job. Um, unfortunately, my job seems to keep me away from church many Sundays, and, and I find that I'm here less and less often. But when I am here, I am so encouraged by what God is doing I'm so encouraged by the new faces that I'm seeing, faces that have come and gone and come again. We're so honored to have you in this place. And if you're joining us online, we pray that one day, whatever circumstances are that keep you from being here physically, we pray that you would come and join us so that we could worship and fellowship together. My friends, if, uh, if you are new to our house, if it's been a while since you've been here, we welcome you to fill out one of those U cards. You find them right in front of your pews. Grab a pen, fill them out. Let us know who you are. We just want to meet you. We want to bless you. We want to know more about you. We want to let you know that we love you, we honor you, and you've made the right decision by being at Cross Lake Church today. We're going to get to the word in just a few moments, but I have a few very important announcements that I'm obligated to share with you. The first is that if you are a member of our church, if you're a member of our church, please, 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 for five minutes after this service, remain in this hall. There's one more very important thing we need to talk about and vote on. So please do not rush at the end of service to leave this place. Stay here. Cafe will also be open for fellowship. The other important announcement is that right after ser uh, service... Today, this afternoon, our Next Steps class is happening. This is a great opportunity for you if you've been toying with the idea of getting more involved, of becoming a member here at Crosslight. This is an opportunity for you to hear a little more about what our church believes in, what our heart is beating for, and what our desires and vision are. Please, this is a very brief 
four-week session. It's going to always be after English service, so please join us for the first meeting this afternoon. Um, the next thing is that we have an all-directors meeting this evening after evening service. All directors, if you are head of a department, we invite you to join us. There's an important matter that we have to vote on this afternoon. So please, if you are head of department, join us for the all directors meeting this evening. This coming Friday, I'm told that there is a night watch on February 16th from 8 p.m. to midnight. A great opportunity to join in fasting, prayer, and unity, and intercession for what God is doing and will continue to do. That's this Friday, the 16th, from 8 p.m. to midnight. I also want to put in a shameless plug that almost every single Sunday night um, and every Wednesday night, we have prayers in this house. Please, this is not just for leaders. This is not just for the youth. This is collectively for all nations, all tribes, all languages, all services, all generations. Join us in prayer Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. Tag sale is happening this year. Um, please, as you begin to spring clean, because we love the weather outside, do not throw your items away. Very, very soon there will be a big trailer on the side of the church, and we're going to start collecting donations soon. So please keep that in mind. If you come across items that are of good quality and that you just don't have use for anymore, but someone else might be blessed by, don't throw them away. Keep uh, that in mind, and we will be with you. And uh, finally, the last announcement is that on March 3rd, please mark your calendars. If you're a member of our church, March 3rd is a very important day at 5 p.m. We will be having a membership meeting where we will be voting for um, new members to the board of trustees. So please, March 3rd at 5 p.m. if you're a member, clear your calendars, take the time off from work, reschedule your already planned vacations, make sure you're here. And without further ado, Roman, we invite you. Thank you. Praise God, church. Amen? Amen. Um, awesome worship. It's, uh, it's awesome to be in the house of the Lord. We see and we, we can feel his presence here in this place. I remember David Wilkerson, a preacher from New York, once uh, told a story. He was uh, on vacation with his wife and um, uh, he, he was just walking uh, on the sidewalk there and meditating upon what God is doing and... Um, he just heard a voice in his heart, and he felt it was from Holy Spirit. David, look up to the skies, and he did. And it was just, you know, bright, uh, uh, clear sky and all the stars, and there was a moon uh, shining. And uh, the voice says, David, uh, jump over the moon. And he says, that's not from God, jump over the moon. That can't be Holy Spirit. And he hears the voice again, jump, jump over the moon. And then the voice says, well, if you can't jump over the moon, you cannot save yourself. Because you see, he was trying in his flesh, trying to prove to God that he's good. That somehow he wanted to be accepted by, uh, by God because, you know, he's not like anybody else. He's different. And he can, uh, he can improve and, and uh, prove to God that he can be accepted. And the Holy Spirit says, no, no, it's all my gift. You either receive that gift that I gave you, that you're accepted in the beloved, that you are received and saved as you will be for eternity future. It's all by my works on the cross. You can't add anything to it. That's what Ephesians 2, 8 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that's not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, let, let's, lest anybody can boast. And so in this gathering, in this church service, it's awesome when we come. There's nothing you or I can do to please God other than just worship him. And amen. How good he is, and he is really good. He saved us, and uh, not by any works, and he accepted us. He loves us. And uh, there, next verse in uh, uh, chapter 2 of Ephesians uh, verse 10, I know Brother Kurt, he loves that verse, that passage. Uh, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works that he predestined for us to fulfill. And so my message today will dwell on that a little bit. And my topic today is serving God. Are you ready to serve God? Yes. You know, we, it's interesting that um, 
There's so much misunderstanding going on in the Christian circles what serving God really is. I mean, how can you serve God? If I give you next 10, 15 minutes and say, serve God, like what would you do? <laughs> you know, we call this service at noon. Our service starts at noon, right? We all arrived at noon. We're saying service, serving what? Serving who? We're saying, well, we're serving God with our praises. And, and it is true. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says this in verse 15. Therefore, by him, let us that is through Christ, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's all we can do. But you know, I just want, right in the beginning, I just want to tell you what serving God isn't. What serving God isn't is us coming here every Sunday and just worshiping him. Because if you're writing things down, I want you to write this, uh, uh, this down. Serving God equals serving people. Very simple. If you take anything out of this message today, <laughs> and, and that is it. It's very simple. Serving God equals serving people. You see, Jesus at the Lake of Galilee, when he was restoring Peter, and he tells Peter, you know, do you love me? Three times, and then at the end he says, Peter, if you love me, if you want to serve me, feed my sheep. He cares about his sheep. He says, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not going to be here anymore. You can't do anything for me. In fact, book of Acts chapter 17, Paul says, God does not need ser service of human hands. Like he's in need of anything. He's not in need of anything. <laughs> he does not dwell in temples that built by human hands. He gives life and breath and everything to everybody. He doesn't need our service. Yet in chapter 25 of Matthew, he says, whatever you did to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. He cares about his brethren. He cares about his least of these. He cares about his sheep. And serving God means serving God. People. And I'll show it to you um, in the scripture. And a look at the Phil, uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, what it says. For it, is, for, it, for it is God who works in you both to will, first thing, to will, you have a desire, and to do for his good pleasure. Now, it is God. Whenever you see, you see God can fill you and give you anointing and give you resources only for one thing if it is to bless somebody else if you see something and especially it starts in the church if you see there's a need uh the worship is not as good worship team is not as, well join them and help it out help them out <laughs> and and make it better well the word we, we, we wish it's better well show us how it's done <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the classrooms uh, uh, teaching staff or teachers well join the staff you see, God will supply you according to your desire. And first, he gives you that desire. He gives you that resource to fulfill that for his own pleasure. You know, it kind of reminds me of that friend who came to his, um, his friend's house or his neighbor's house at midnight. And he says, he's banging on the door at midnight. And he says, wake up, give me a bread. And by the way, that bread is not for me. <laughs> it's for my friend. How many times have you prayed that prayer? Lord, bless me. Give me resources. Why? Because, Lord, by the way, it's not for me. It's for somebody else that I might not even know. I just want to bless those people. You know, we, a lot of times we just pray selfish prayer. Me, myself, and I. Bless me. And then we're saying, well, Lord's not answering prayer. What, what if it's self-centered and selfish request? And God answers. He just a lot of times says, no, that's his answer. <laughs> and, uh, and so he gives you that desire and he gives you, supplies you with resource to fulfill it. And it is to fulfill somebody else's need. That's why Jesus says it's more blessed to give than to receive. You know, there was a story about uh, rich people from California, rich uh, uh, kids uh, their toys cost up to $100,000. They, they asked uh, one boy and said, show me your toys. Like, what do you have in the house? Like, why are you depressed? Why do you want to commit suicide? Like, what, what are you missing in life? And he showed him some toys. He showed them around, like hundreds of thousands of dollars of toys. 
various. I mean, from bikes to cars to whatever. And you want to commit suicide? He says, yeah. So there was a one group, one company decided to do something radical. They take a few of those boys and took them to India to Mother Teresa's hospital, whatever it's called. And they worked there for six months. And they asked them after the six months, they said, do you still want to commit suicide? They said, no. We're the happiest man. I'm the happiest man alive. I found my purpose. But you live in this poverty, smell and stench. Are you kidding me? Aren't you missing those mansions in California? He says, absolutely not. I don't want to go back. I want to stay here. I found purpose of my life. Friends, and it, those are not, not even Christians. Those are just people. It's better to give than to receive. You know, a lot of times we're confused and we're coming to church and we're, we look so pious, praying and worshiping God. And, and yet when we shake hands to our brother, sometimes it's like this. And we're so busy. I mean, why don't you just have a honest smile? Like you're serving, the, you're shaking the hands of Jesus himself. Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think our society and our church would improve quite a bit? I think so. I'm just talking about shaking right now. Serving God with those little small details. Doesn't require you necessarily go on mission trips or do something big. Start small. Serve your neighbor. That's how you serve God. Because a lot of times we got it all mixed up. I just want you to remember three things before we go into prayer. Serving God practically, biblically, it means three things. You serve with your time, with your talent, and with your treasure. Those are the three things. That's how you can serve God. And all those things, God will supply and give it to you only for one thing, that you can bless others. Because that's what he cares about. He says, if you want to serve me, serve the least of these. If you, if you want to serve me, see me in jail. Go to those inmates. That's where I'm at, I'm at right now. If you want to see and serve me, go to hospitals. If you want to serve me, you see that person needs a clothes, he needs a food. You're serving me. With your time, talent, and treasure. Time is very important. Ecclesiastes 8.6, it says this. For every activity, there is a right time and procedure or action, even though men's trouble are heavy on him. In other words, a lot of times people don't know what's prescribed for them to do in this specific time. Do you know? Church, I just want to ask you this. Do you know at this point in time, I don't care if you're 20, 40, 50, 60, what God calls you to do right now, are you doing it? Because it is prescribed for you for this time, for this day, this year, for you to accomplish certain things. Are you doing it? And look at there, uh, verse 5. It says this. The one who keeps command, that is command of God, that is who is in touch with God, with relationship with God. He will not experience anything harmful. And a wise heart knows the right time and procedure. Right heart. Knows what I'm supposed to do right now. And you know what? When you're doing it, you feel like you're fish in the water. You feel like th th this is, and you're excited doing it. It's not a drag. It's not like, oh, there's another extra practice. Um, or I got to get ready for a class or, or, or another missionary trip. You just, you're loving it. it. It's like you're breathing air. You, you, you're so excited to do it. Because you know time and procedure. Pastor can't tell you that. Your father can't tell you that. There's only one who can tell you what you're supposed to be doing. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the head of the body. You're the member of the body. And whatever member you are and how you function, and it's up to you. And you need to find out from him who you are and who he calls you to be. And are you doing it? Are you being faithful? A lot of times church is suffering because a lot of people are lazy and not doing what they're supposed to do. Or sometimes they're taking somebody else's spot. And not doing what they're supposed to be doing. 
Because they're confused. And there are two evils because you're not in the spot where God calls you to be. And you're taking somebody else's spot. Do you have right heart? Do you know time and procedure? What are you supposed to be doing at this very moment? Time. You're serving God. The time on this earth God gave you, God gave me. That youth, youthful years that you have, that's a resource he gave you. Mary and, and Martha, you remember the story. And, and Martha, she was serving Christ. And she wanted to really impress him and disciples and, and preparing a meal. And, and, and Mary just sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his word and spending time with him. And uh, a lot of times, you know, I look, I look at my life and I, I, love, I just love to serve. I really do. And I enjoy that more than anything. And I look at my life and I'm just saying, how can you balance when you're serving God and how much time do you really spend with him? It's not bad what Martha was doing. There, there, there's nothing bad in serving. But do you take time to spend with your heavenly father? Jesus, he would serve the whole day. He would get so tired. But nights, he would spend in prayer. And he's the son of God. And that's what he was doing. Friends, that's where we get our, our, our power, our anointing, if you will, if we'll spend our time with Jesus in our prayer closet. And uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 3, and here's what Paul says. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that uh, all supplications, prayers, intercessions, that's a priest, priestly job, and, and giving of things be made for all men. Say all men. You know what? That's your job. It's my job. Intercede on behalf of the whole world. That's what Paul says. First of all, before you pray about anything, you have needs, you have things to do, you have family to worry about. Pray for all men. Why? And the very next verse says, because God desires that all men be saved. He always thinks of others. He wants you to have the Father's heart. He always looking after those least of these. My brethren, feed my sheep. Pray for all men. And I tell you something, you're, it, it, maybe you're going through depression, I don't know. You know, we just sang the song, which is awesome. All depression will flee. It will not flee. You need to flee. You need to fly somewhere <laughs> and do something. I'm talking, prog I mean, I know there might be some medical issues uh, possibly, but you know, I'm telling, in general, I'm saying, if, if you're feeling uh, not satisfied and you don't have a joy of, of being saved, guess what? Get plugged in. Get to next steps classes. Get plugged in. Do something in the church. And maybe it will be um, the wrong place for you, not where God calls you. But you'll find the right place as, as, as long as you make that first step. Saying, God, I, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just going to do something. I, I want to help people. I love people. I want to serve people. Whatever you put me, that's what I'm going to do. Guess what? God will direct your steps if you're obedient, if you're, you make it that first step for the Lord. Time. Spending time. For God in prayer, in interceding for yourself and for the whole world. Second, talent. talent. And friends, we're going to read Matthew 25. And it, you, know, you know the story. You know, five, two talents and one talent. And there's a show. I, I don't know if you know it. Probably do. It's called Americans Got, America's Got a Talent. Have you heard that? Yeah, probably. And, um, well, can I tell you something? Crosslight's got a talent. <laughs> you have a talent. And now the, the, the problem is the talent in the word of God is not how best you can sing. It's not how best you can talk or dress or, or whatever or perform some, uh, I don't know, uh, gymnastics or whatever. The talent in the word of God is a measure of resources. The talent is uh, equals to 20 years of average wage, salary. If you take, take it today and convert it, you know, take 50,000 average salary, you end up with about a million bucks for just one talent. And talent, as, as you will see right now, I'll read you the first verse, is a resource, is it's measure of silver, which 
uh, one talent equals 75 pounds of silver or gold. And look what Jesus says. And, of course, he's talking about himself. Who's, who's the master who, le uh, who left those talents? Of course, Jesus is talking about himself, right? So look at what he says, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. What is a talent? Goods. It's a resource. What kind of goods did he deliver to them? Five talents, two talents, and one talent. A resource. And friends, talent in the word of God is everything that you have. That's your resource. What do you have that you have not received from the Lord? Your clothes? The very breath in your lungs? What do you have that you did not receive from the Lord, Paul says? But if you have received it from the Lord, why do you boast as if you have not received? Why don't you acknowledge that very life depends upon him, whether he gives you the next breath or not? What you have that does not belong to the Lord? Nothing. It all belongs to him. That's your talent. The country you're born in, having an American passport, that's a talent. That's a resource. That can take you in many places. For missionary work, I'm talking. Amen? What about living in the richest country in the world and having all the resources you can have that you can bless others? You know what our problem is? It's not the resources, not the richest, you know, we could be millionaires, could be sitting here, I don't know. It's not the problem with that. The problem is not with the money. The problem is loving the money. The problem is not using those resources in the proper in the proper way, and that is blessing others. That's the problem. A lot of times, people just, millionaires, they, they go crazy because they don't know what to do with their money. Next uh, market crash or something. What am I going to do? I'm going to lose $10 million, $20 million. And they go, and they're walking depressed. And they got those zeros in the balance, uh, you know, six zeros and ten zeros. I don't know. But they're not happy. They're worrying. But if you use those resources, that talent, to bless others, you will be blessed. And that's what Jesus is given us here. Verse 24, then he who received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a harsh man. Some translation says hard man, but harsh man. You know what the problem with the man who had one talent was? His relationship with his master. He didn't know him. He called him harsh man. Let me ask you this. Who is the master in this parable? Jesus, right? Is he harsh or is he good? Jesus, he's God. And isn't God good? Amen. But this man, this servant says, I know you are harsh man. You reap where you have not sown. But the Lord answered and said to him, you are wicked and lazy servant. Maybe you're not weak at here. Maybe don't do sin, don't do major sins in your life. But are you lazy? That's his second charge. Just being lazy. I just buried it. Hey, he didn't waste it. That's a million bucks. That's a lot of money. He just put in a savings account. Now, why are Christians do? I'll put my life on savings account. All the resources God gave me, you know what? I'll preserve it until the Lord comes back. Guess what? When the master came back, he didn't say, all right, well, at least give me mine back. He said, sent them to utter darkness. That's a judgment. And friends, it's not just a matter of, oh, I can use my resources. I can do whatever I want with them. Well, this man thought that, that way he can do. His master says no. I remember... Um, Yesterday, I went to gym. I go to gym now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to lose a pound this year. Just one pound. And, uh, you know, I met my previous boss. I worked for him for many years. That was a few years ago. 
and we were talking about family and stuff and uh, and I said I, you know I missed the place his name is Sal and uh, and he says he says Roman you, you did a great job while you were there you know how awesome it is to hear that I'm not boasting I'm boasting in the Lord I'm just stating the fact but can you imagine standing before the Lord and he says good and faithful servant you are faithful and little I remember when Novix came from uh, lukewarm Christian California a quarter century ago and uh, <laughs> we were in different high schools Pastor Slava and I were working on a farm local farm planting flowers out of all things <laughs> he was planting I was collecting them and uh, we call this place upper room where it was a break room upstairs and we would get together and and uh, you know he would him and his brother Andre would talk about revival we need revival you know we're praying and fasting they did bring revival in their place praise God and, and I know a lot of you sitting here remember those days and uh, uh, so he would be talking about you know how he's challenged by Pharisees and Sadducees and and, and I say the same thing and and uh, uh, it, it was awesome time um, there was a revival and I thank God for the, the anointing that was upon them during those days and we had ministry together youth together but one thing I remember we called them Novik boys and uh, we worked with, uh, there were co-workers with us, Vietnamese. Have you ever worked with Vietnamese people? I mean, God have mercy on you if Vietnamese is your supervisor or manager. These are like working machines, all right? I mean, they can work, <laughs> all right? And these boys, during break time, they'll boast. They, they can outwork them. It's, it's like 170 degrees in those greenhouses. We're working 12, 16-hour day shifts. But they can outwork the best workers in the company in that place. You know, I, sometimes I looked at them and said, they work worse than or harder than any Egyptian slave ever thought of working. And people from outside might be thinking, oh, these are kids of the, the owner probably. They own this place. They don't. They're making six or seven bucks an hour like I do. Youth these days wouldn't even get up out of bed for seven bucks. <laughs> Why am I saying this? Because a lot of times we want to separate our church activities from our daily life. And we're saying, oh, that's just our school, that's our college, that's our workplace. You know, they don't know me, I don't want to know them. I'll do, I'll do ministry in the church. But look what scripture says. Colossians 3.22. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. In whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to man. Knowing that for the, from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord you know who he's talking to? He's talking to slaves, Christian slaves. He says, you know when you work for your masters, do your job the best you know how as you are serving Christ. Are you serving Christ at your work? Are you the best worker in your company? Are you the best student at your college and in your school whatever you do do it for the Lord because you serve Christ friends that's your talent it all starts there it all starts with the simple steps of obedience and you don't separate your spiritual life from just your routinely regular working life no it all you're one person you serve master you serve Christ 
the job that you're, uh, you're at right now, God gave it to you. And you should be the witness. You, you know, I, I remember one time, I, 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 the one job I was working at, and there was a person there working in different department, and he was deacon of one of the churches. And you know what reputation, what, what was said of him? Here comes a lazy guy. You say, well, being lazy, that's, that's not a sin. Yes, it is. Because anything you do, you're serving Christ. Whatever job, job you're at, you must be best worker and do the best as you're serving and trying to please the Lord by doing that construction work, the truck you're driving, or whatever work you're doing, the accounting maybe. 100% because you do it for the Lord and the last thing is treasure your time your talent and your treasure I recently had a we were blessed to have another grandchild and his name is Josh Joshua and uh, just a few weeks ago and, and it was so thankful thankful for him but you know what Joshua said in the Word of God? He says, as for me, he says, you, you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> it's up to you. You take it or leave it. But here's what I'm going to tell you. As for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. And friends, he didn't say, as for me, in my home. As for me, in my family. He says, as for me, and you see those cattle? You see those barns? You see those herds over there? You see those fields? My entire house. All the resources I got. We will serve the Lord. All my treasure. David, last passage we're reading and we're going to finish here. First Chronicles verse, uh, chapter 29 verse 1. David is at the end of his life and he's passing his staff um, to his son Solomon who's going to build the house for the Lord and here's what he says my son Solomon whom alone God has chosen is young and in his experience and the work is great because the temple is not for man but for the Lord God now for the house of my God I have prepared with all my might gold for things to be of gold silver for things of silver bronze for things of bronze iron for things of iron wood for things of wood onyx stones stones to be set glistening stones of various colors all kinds of precious stones all and marble slabs in abundance moreover he says because i have set my affection on the house of my god I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house my own special treasure of gold and silver. Where is your heart? Where is your treasure today? Are you thinking to expand God's kingdom? That's what Jesus says. He says, seek the kingdom. And it's not just seeking kingdom just randomly he just said that seeking kingdom in that context seek the expansion of god's kingdom and everything else will be added unto you david says besides everything i've collected as as, as a government official as a king i have my own special treasure i want to dedicate it to the lord to the house of the lord of course this is not a house of the Lord this is not a temple in the Old Testament sense but this is a house of the Lord because children of God gather here because God's presence is here because people of God are gathering here that's why it's house of the Lord that's why it's Bethel where is your treasure do you look at people and see how can I help how can I get plugged in how can I invest more in my neighbor maybe just like that Samaritan who pulled his wallet and said I don't know that person but you know what here's the in innkeeper here's the money if you need more I'll pay you more later he spent some time he pulled the wine and oil and poured on the wound 
of that person. He didn't even know. He served him. Time. Talent. And treasure. And through that, the name of the Lord can be magnified in our lives, in our church. I hope you do in that church. I really do. If you're not, if you're being lazy, maybe you need to repent. Maybe you're not weak at servant, but you don't serve with zeal and, and passion. You don't give this 100%. Your department is suffering. Your class is suffering. Your group is suffering because you're being lazy. Maybe you need to repent. Maybe you need to say, God, I've been selfish. I've been concentrating on myself so much. In church, your house is suffering because of me. I'm going to give it all to you. My time, my talent, and my treasure. Let us stand. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads. and We're going to have prayer. I know I'm talking to a church right now. I'm not talking, if you're here first time and maybe you're listening online and you need to know how to get right with God. Friends, it's only through Jesus. It's only through the cross. It's only through His blood. What He's done for us 2,000 years ago, He's done it for you. For God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son that you will not perish but have eternal life. Put your trust in Him right now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait another day. Tomorrow might not come do it today today is a day of salvation today is a day where you can reconcile with your heavenly father as a prodigal run back to him run back to his embrace i'm talking to church right now i'm talking to you saved i'm talking to those who know that you belong to your master and he entrusted you so much talents he gave you time he gave you treasure he gave you health and wealth are you investing it into his kingdom? Are you putting it all at the feet of Jesus? And maybe just like that boy who had only a few loaves of bread and a few fishes and, and he brought it to Jesus and, and those elements could bless thousands when Jesus blesses it. Maybe that's what you need to bring to Jesus. Maybe you need to humble to yourself and say, Lord, this is all I got, but I'm laying it at the altar. I'm laying it at the altar. I'm being the living sacrifice on the altar. I belong to you. My house belongs to you. My resources belong to you. My time belongs to you. My talent belongs to you. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve my neighbor. If you need to pray, if you need to reconnect with God, if you lost that, maybe you're going through depression. In church, it's absolutely impossible for you to be depressed if you're in the calling and the mission of Christ. You need to get back. You need to get right with God right now. Run to Him. He will call you to places. He will bring you to places. Will You're going to serve the Lord. You'll find out that you're serving your neighbor. And that will bless your heart. That will bring joy. That will bring peace into your life. If this is you, the altars are open. Pastors will be praying for you. Don't hesitate. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus right now. Give it all to Him because He is worthy. He gave it all for us. There is nothing you can do but sing hallelujah to His name. Because He saved us. By His grace, He saved us. Are you serving Him? Are you hearing that Lord is good and faithful service? Or are you being lazy? You're being lazy at your job, at your college, at your school. Bring, bring it that report on the Lord's name. We need to repent today. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, be gracious to us, Lord. We don't deserve your mercy. We don't deserve your grace. Of kings and Lord of Lord, you're holy, you're mighty. You gave us so much, Lord. We don't deserve it all. We don't deserve nothing, Jesus. But you're blessing our families.
mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. May all the chains come down in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, Lord. May all the oppression come down in Jesus' name. All depression flee in Jesus' name. Lord, restore. Restore your church today, Lord. Restore every single one of us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. anointed us you have forgiven us you have given us life so that we have the ability to shine your light everywhere that we go so we can have the ability to serve our co-workers our friends our family members our colleagues to serve them to be with them to shine your light God, I pray that you would bless the remainder of this day, this week. Father, as we go back into our spheres of influence, we can shine your light. We can be a blessing to so many people. Jesus, to you belongs the highest praise, the glory, the honor. God's people said a mighty amen. Amen, amen. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. He really deserves it. Worship and thank you so much, Roman. Thank you for the word that was spoken. Dear people, this is this um, concludes our Sunday service. The cafe remains open. One very quick announcement well, a couple of them, but one is that next step classes are starting now. If you are new to this church, you want to get plugged in, you want to become a member, it's going it's happening at the conference hall, which is when you enter in through the main entrance it's the first door to your right so you can go there at this very moment cafe remains open and i do want, want to ask for just a couple of minutes if all the members of the church just the members for just a few minutes can remain here it's no longer a spiritual moment so thank you <laughs> but for just a couple minutes if we could have the members of the church stay i have a couple announcements and we're going to make a quick vote this is for